Sri Sai Ram. Good morning, perfect English students. Today we're going into grammar. We're going into the workbook called Streams. These are streams of English language to help us so that we can communicate better and more beautifully with everyone. There's a note on this workbook that we should cover first. The workbook is intended to develop language skills in all of the students so that they may express themselves better. All the four learning skills, listening first, speaking, reading, and writing have been given due weightage in this book through an integrated approach. Activities have been designed so that the learners can acquire these skills by working on their own with the teacher or with fellow students. The workbook has five units. The first unit is called language use. The exercises in this language section, both in the course book and this workbook, are intended to reinforce the student's functional use of the language. So language use part one. In part one, we're going to review all of the uh, information that we've learned in the first 11 years. First of all, we have articles. And we know what the articles are. A, an, and the. These are the words that are used so many times in English. Every story, every poem use these words a number of times. And if they're used properly, there's a beautiful flow. Everybody's happy. So let's go over a few simple rules before we go into the work itself. An, an, as you know, is always used before a vowel. And the vowels are A, E, I, O, and U. Or it's also used in front of words that sound like a vowel. Like honor. Honor, it starts with an O. The H is silent. So I'll give you an example. We have an apple. An apple starts with A, the A uh sound. So we say an apple. Elephant has the E sound. An elephant. Then I has the ice cream sound, an ice cream. Not a ice cream, an ice cream. And then we have O for orange, an orange. And finally we have U, like an umbrella, an umbrella. And then if we have an hour, hour starts with H, but the H is silent, so it has an O sound. So we go an hour. Uh, and, um, honor, or another one is MLA, okay? M starts with an E sound. That's what we say, an MLA. So an is very simple to use. A, a little trickier, but there's a, some general rules that we can follow. And if you follow these rules, you'll be correct most of the time. And the rest of the time you can acquire from reading pose, uh, poetry and prose. A is used in a general sense. If we say a cow, a horse, a building, we use A. It's not specific. Uh, in, you use A in front of a consonant. Uh, the tree, you, see, you say a tree, okay? Or when you are uh, regarding a subject for the first time, you always use A. The is a specific um, article, and we use that when there's a specific person that we're referring to, like the girl over there. Not a girl over there, we say the girl over there, the boy over there, the tree over there. When it's specific, we use the. And <clears throat> when you've referred to a girl or a cow in a general way, the first time, the second time, people know what you're talking about, so you can use the word the, which is the specific article. And then we know that prepositions are words that we use to indicate location and flow and also time. So with these general rules, let's go into uh, the text here, the questions that they've asked. And they start off by saying, students need to have a fair knowledge. When they say fair knowledge, they mean a good knowledge of the building blocks of the language they learn. And we're learning English because English is spoken by two billion people on the planet now, and the numbers are increasing. It's good to communicate in English. The following exercises are included to help them in this process and enable them to communicate better. 
That's the name of the game. All students have been asked, once they've graduated school, what was their most important subject? And they all 100% agree that communication skills are the most important subject that we, that we use in school. So let's go into A, articles and prepositions. Fill in the blanks with the appropriate articles slash prepositions whenever necessary. Now, when we take our test, it's very important to read the instructions first. You'll see the words whenever necessary. Sometimes they'll have a blank space and it's not necessary to put anything in there. The flow is nice. We're going for flow. We're going for communication skills. So let's read this first sentence. The science fiction book is, and there's a blank, blank, alien who is naughty. So we have to make this sentence make some sense. So the science fiction book is, so we have a book. We usually have a subject for the book. So the book is about, and then we see the word alien. So it must be about an alien. So alien starts with an A. So from our rules, we always put an is the, is the uh, uh, article that we use in front of a vowel. So it would seem to me that the two words should be, this science fiction book is about an alien who is naughty. Then we know we've discussed the book in the first line. So the book, we're discussing the same book, is also very, and then is a blank, informative. All right. It is very informative. That's, that's sufficient by itself. We don't need to put something in that blank space. I have suggested the book, and then we have friend. We have two spaces in front of friend. So it's a nice book. I've read it. Uh, it's got a good story about aliens. And I suggested this book. And wh what do we suggest? We suggest to your friend, to a friend. The article is A because we're putting in articles and prepositions. So to is the preposition. It's I'm recommending the book to a friend. So let's see if those are, those are right. Answers, let's see. The science fiction book is about an alien who is naughty. This book is also very informative. We don't have anything in front of informative. I suggested the book to a friend. Now let's go to the second uh, sentence. The teacher gave us blank assignment. Two spaces, interesting subject, topic. The teacher gave us, so obviously we need an article there, an assignment, because assignment starts with an A. So the, the, the word should be an. And then we have two blank spaces, an assignment. What's the assignment about? It's an interesting topic. So the assignment is on and interesting because I is the first uh, letter in the next word. So we always use an in front of a vowel. So the teacher gave us an assignment on an interesting topic. She told us to submit. Now we already know we have an assignment, okay? So this is the assignment. We're going to use the, which is a specific article, the assignment. And then we have two spaces. For Monday, on Monday, how many, how many uh, spaces do we need? We have one blank and one space in front of Monday. So the teacher gave us an assignment on an interesting topic. She told us to submit the assignment on Monday. Are these the right answers? Yes. The teacher gave us an assignment on an interesting subject, topic. She told us to submit the assignment on Monday. Let's go to the third sentence. The people were dissatisfied. Leaders' performance. So what are they dissatisfied with? They're dissatisfied with something, okay? Uh, something has to do with the leader's performance. So they say the people were dissatisfied with a preposition the leaders, okay? We know which leaders we're talking about. We're not talking about any leaders. The leaders are specific. So the people were dissatisfied with the leaders' performance. So they decided to boycott 
Boycott means to stand up and not go. We're not going to go to this thing because we don't like what the leaders are doing. So they boycott the elections. The leaders are trying to be elected, so they boycott the elections. As a mark, we have mark, and we need a, a um, article in front of mark. So when it's an M, M is a, a consonant, we use the word A. We uh, uh, boycott the elections as a mark of protest, because we have to have some word in front of protest. Uh, we want to protest this thing, and because of we're not happy with this performance, it's a mark of protest. The leaders, the same leaders, appealed to them, to the people, to reconsider the decision. The leaders said, please, people, we're trying to serve you. Let, it, let this thing go ahead. Give us a break. So let's see if those are the right words. The people were dissatisfied with the leaders' performance. So they decided to boycott the elections as a mark of protest. The leaders appealed to them to reconsider their decision. So we have all of the proper articles and prepositions in these three. And you'll notice we have the first one, uh, the alien, who is naughty. He's driving his alien buddy over here, okay? And we have the book. So let's go ahead with the next one. Number four, we have production steel has gone up 10% in the last one year. So we have production. Production is not like a cows where you can number it. It's a non-counting uh, non, uh, uh, noun, okay? So we always use the, which is a specific article in front of a, a non-counting noun, okay? The production, production of what? Production of steel has gone up. So it's gone up, well, you have to have some word before, uh, before 10%, by 10% in the last one year. 10% blank space, last one year. When did it go up? In the last year, it went up 10%. This may lead, lead where? Lead to. We're going to something. To is the preposition here. And then we have increase, and we use the rule in front of a vowel, A, E, I, or U, we use an, not a. So this may lead to an increase of about, we're not sure exactly what the increase is going to be, but the direction is about 20% in construction costs. What's the percentage of increase? It's in the construction costs. Where is it going to happen? That's where we have to use a preposition. It's going to happen in the country, the country we're living in. Okay, let's see if this is right. The production of steel has gone up by 10% in the last one year. This may lead to an increase of about 20% in construction costs in the country. We got it right. Let's go to number five. The interview the candidate was asked some interesting questions. Initially, personal interest. So we'll have interviews in the future. All of you are young people. You'll get interviews for new schools, new jobs. So interview, what? What part of the interview? In the interview, when you're speaking with the person who's interviewing you. So the first word should be the preposition in. In the interview. Candidate was asked some interesting questions. Which candidate? The candidate. There's only one candidate. You're the person who's asking the questions or answering the questions. So the is specific. Initially, what? Of his personal interest. He's asked questions about who he is, where he went to school, what he did for extracurricular activities. What does he like? What does he like to do? To make him nice and uh, laid back and have a nice conversation so that the interviewee can be uh, friends with the interviewer and they can have an idea of, of what this man, potential man, will do for the company. So a few more questions were asked. Uh, we have to put in a, an, or the. So in front of few, which is a consonant, we put a. 
a few more questions were asked. Not specific questions, general questions. What do you do after work? Uh, what extracurricular activities did you do in school? Were you part of the band? Any of these nice questions, but general questions. So in front of general questions, we use A or N. In this case, it's a consonant, so we use A. A few more questions were asked on the same lines, about the same lines. We can use on or about. On is a little more specific in this case. On the same lines. So that there would be no tension. No tension for who? For the candidate. So we use the word for. Let's see if we're right. In the interview, the candidate was asked some interesting questions, initially of his personal interest. A few more questions were asked on the same lines, so there would be no tension for the candidate. And you can see we have steel production here, and uh, the steel is a major component of any construction costs. So if the price of steel has gone up 10%, your construction costs may go up more than 20%. But that's a good ballpark guess. guess. Let's go on. Number six. This is a beautiful little story about two neighbors. One was a little girl who lived next to an older gentleman who lived next to, uh, in the house next door. And little Radha was, and then we have garden, filling in hole when her neighbor peered fence, interested what the cheeky-faced youngster was doing. Here she is, she's got a shovel, and she's digging a hole, and she's putting something in the hole and filling it up. The neighbor has a fence there, so he's, he's, he's thinking, wait, what's this girl doing? You know, she's digging in the backyard. I don't see any trees or anything. What is she doing? So he has curiosity. So little Rada was in her garden. Where was she? In the garden, filling in, uh, a hole, okay? There, there could have been many holes, but she was filling in a hole. It's a non-specific hole. When her neighbor peered, now we have two blank spaces, okay? Fences can be chain link fences where you can see through them, or they can be a solid fence where you peer over the fence. So in this case, we're using peered through the fence. Now we could put over the fence. Either one is acceptable. But the, we use the, the uh, definite um, article the in front of fence. So the neighbor peered through the fence interested, what's he interested? Interested in what the cheeky faced youngster was doing. He's, uh, he's over by himself but his neighbor's doing something a little unusual. He's interested in what she's doing. So let's see if those answers are right. The Larada was in the garden filling in a hole when her neighbor peered through the fence, interested in what the cheeky-faced youngster was doing. He politely, because he's inter interfering in her space, he politely asked, what are you up to there, Radha? So Radha said, my goldfish died, replied Radha tearfully. She's crying. She is tears coming out of her eyes without looking up. She didn't even look up at the neighbor because she knows something the neighbor does not know. And I've just buried him. So she buried the goldfish, okay? The goldfish was killed and uh, was dead and she had to bury it in a nice way because she loved this goldfish. The neighbor was concerned. He's looking through the fence. He sees this great big hole and he's thinking, wow, a little goldfish, you know, look how small it is. I mean, uh, how, how big of a hole do you need for a little goldfish? And he said, that's awfully big hole goldfish, isn't it? So we have to fill in the blanks. Awfully starts with A, it's a vowel. So we use the article, that's an awfully big hole. Hole for what? We use the word for. For goldfish, we have to use an article for the goldfish, so A is used in front of a, of a consonant, which is G. So that's an awfully big hole for a goldfish, isn't it? 
Radha patted down the last heap earth and then replied, that's because he's inside your cat. <laughs> so Radha's patting down the last speed, there's only one hole there, and she's patting down the earth. Okay, the earth is specific. The last heap of earth, and then replied, that's because he's inside your cat. She had to dig a bigger hole to put the cat in because the goldfish was inside the cat, and she wanted to bury the goldfish nicely. Let's see if we're right. Ah, perfect. Radha was in the garden, and then she uh, filled in the hole, and the neighbor peered through the fence, interested in what she was doing, and uh, politely asked, What are you up to, Radha? My goldfish died without looking up, and I've just buried him. The neighbor was concerned. That's an awfully big hole for a goldfish, isn't it? Radha patted down the last heap of earth and replied, That's because he's inside your cat. So Radha did the right thing. She buried her goldfish nicely with due honors. And because it was in the cat, she had to bury the cat too. So the cat got his um, karma for killing the goldfish and uh, then he gets to be reborn again. And you can see the cat. He had just finished eating up the goldfish. So we've covered articles and prepositions. Now let's see what the next topic is. Jumbled segments. We all love jumbled segments. It's like a game. Where do the words go? And the reason we have words in certain specific order is that is the meaning of the sentence changes depending on the order of the words. There's a proper order. When you are trying to convey a message, you have, usually have a subject, the boy, the girl, the cat, the goldfish. Okay, what happens? That's the predicate. The subject is what we mention first, usually, and then the predicate goes on and tells what's happening with the subject. So, rearrange the following words slash phrases to form meaningful sentences. The whole reason for communication in English is to communicate beautifully, nicely, meaningfully. The first one is done as an example. We have an example. We have the words, it, is, important, protect, to, our, environment. So we put them in the proper order. It is important to protect our environment. The environment is the noun, okay, that's the subject, but it's important. Uh, this is the uh, predicate. This is what we have to do. It's important to protect this environment. So let's go into the uh, questions that they have, have asked us to figure out. Number one, we have the words own, their, every, its, language, country, has. So, we have country, okay? And then we have every country. So let's go, every country has, that's the verb, its own language. So it makes sense. Every country has their own language. Some countries have the same language, but they have their own language. Two, divided countries, continents, the, is, into, and world. So we have a, a subject here, world. All right, the world, it's only one world. We have the picture of the world right there. The world, then we have the verb, the verb is is, divided. It's a double, double verb here, is divided. Into, and then this is important, continents are bigger than countries, okay? In a continent, you could have many countries. So we usually put the bigger word in front of the smaller word. So we have, the world is divided into continents and countries. Let's see if we're right. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. It, every country has its own language, and the world is divided into continents and countries. We can see here the country of India, okay, in the Asian, Asian continent. And over here we have Africa. Beautiful world. Let's go ahead. Three. We have very deforestation, deforestation to be 
can prove damaging to Mother Earth. So we look, what is the subject here? It looks like Mother Earth is the subject, okay? And uh, then we had the word deforestation. So we have another noun there. So we think about this. Deforestation can be very damaging to Mother Earth. So we're using the deforestation noun first. Is that the right words? Yes, deforestation can prove to be very damaging to Mother Earth. Number four, should each individual his on plant a tree birthday? So we have each individual, tree, and birthday. We have three nouns here, but let's make sense out of it. Each individual should or could, should plant a tree on his birthday. Makes perfect sense, okay? Let's see, is that correct? Yes. Each individual should plant a tree on his birthday. And we can see here, this is a picture of deforestation. They've cut down all of the trees in this whole area. We have an aerial view, and all we have left is a bunch of lumber with just a few trees left. On the second picture, we have a beautiful tree that some child has planted on his birthday. You can see the beauty and the oxygen, and nature is happy. Let's go to the fifth one. To keep, we encourage, must, the green earth, afforestation. Okay, so on number three, we had deforestation, which is getting rid of the trees. Now we have afforestation, which is bringing more trees. So afforestation uh, is used for what? To keep the earth green, we must encourage afforestation. Let's see if that's right. Yes, we must encourage afforestation to keep the earth green. So there's a couple of ways we can put this, but we use afforestation to keep the earth green. And you can see we've got the tree planted here and the earth is nice and green around it. Let's go to the next one. Number six, humility. A lot, simplicity, has, with, to do. So we have two words here, okay? Simplicity and humility. These are nouns. So one of them is going to go first. Let's see. Simplicity. Let's start with simplicity. Simplicity has, that's our verb, a lot to do with humility. That makes sense, doesn't it? Or we could say humility has a lot to do with simplicity. Hmm, simplicity is a quality of humility. So let's use simplicity first. Let's see if that's right. Simplicity has a lot to do with humility. That's the correct answer. Number seven, used as a to highlight newspapers. A, R, powerful, weapon, social problems. Here we have many nouns, okay? But it seems to emphasize around newspapers, okay? So let's start with newspapers. Newspapers are, are, what are they? A powerful weapon used to highlight social problems. Does that make sense? Let's see. Newspapers are used as a powerful weapon to highlight social problems. Correct. Let's go back to number eight. Sport and business world, in the, also, rife, is, corruption, of. Rife means it's absolutely widespread. It's everywhere, rife. So that's the verb. But what is the, what is the uh, uh, subject here? Corruption looks like a subject. Sports and business world could be a subject also. But let's start with corruption. Corruption is also rife in the sports and business world. Or we can put corruption is rife in the sport and business world also. We could put also in either space. Let's see what they say. Corruption is rife in the world of sports and business also. And you can see we have a sporting event here 
It's being televised nationally, maybe across the world. And we have a picture of a newspaper. People read these newspapers, they get good ideas. This is how we change public opinion. Then we have number nine. Rules, certain regulations and regulations must we follow. All right. So we have regulations and rules and we. So let's start with we. All right. We is the subject. We must, must is the verb. We must follow certain rules and regulations. Okay. Let's see. Is that correct? We must follow certain rules and regulations. Makes sense. Number 10, old people, helpful, kind, and, two, should be, one. Okay, so we have old people and we have one. One is usually a subject, okay? We're talking about one. Or we're talking about old people. Let's start with one. One, the verb should be, okay? Kind should be kind. Hmm. To who? Kind and helpful. That's a that's a two uh, two ideas about being kind. To who? To old people. Let's see if we're right. One should be kind and helpful to old people. And you can see this old gentleman, one of the students, okay, has gone up and given a nice snack or helped him across the road. And he is so happy that another human has been kind and helpful to him. This is the underlying reason that we're communicating these things to you, is so that we can uh, live our life in a more beautiful and kind way. What a happy fellow, huh? We've made his day, we've made our own day too. Let's go on, what's the next subject? Oh, here we go. We're going subject, verb, agreement. When we communicate, we want our words to, smooth, uh, to flow smoothly, okay? We want to have good communication between our subjects and our verbs. They should flow like uh, poetry. So it, the instructions are, choose the word that agrees with the subject in the following sentences, okay? So we have plurals and singulars. Whenever we have uh, certain uh, uh, words, uh, if it's plural, if there's more than one person, then we use the plural sense of the verb. If it's only one person, we use the singular tense of that, of that verb. So the first question we have here is, his father and grandfather arrived. So we have a choice. It's an easy question. There's only two choices. But we have to figure out, is it one or two? All right? The father and grandfather. That's two. When you have two, you use the uh, plural have. They have arrived. If you just said the father has arrived, that's singular. So has is singular, have is plural. So for this question, the answer is the father and grandfather, grandmother, which is two, have arrived. Is that the right answer? Yes, have arrived. Let's go back to two. Now this one is tricky. The leader and patriot is or are lost, okay? If it's one person, it's is lost. If it's two people, are lost. Now English is a little tricky. Sometimes it looks like there's two, but there's only one in this case. The leader is also a patriot. He's a patriot. He's, he loves his country. So the leader and patriot is one person. So he is lost. Let's see if that's right. Is lost. It's only one person. Let's go to the third one. Each of the children was, were given a book. All right. We have a child here. He was given two books, but he's looking at one book. Okay. So each means one of the children. There's probably a whole class here. But each child uh, was given a book. If, if one child is given a book, it's singular. It means was. He was given a book. If there's many children, it would be they were given a book. But in this case, we only have one child. 
So the answer is, each of the children was given a book. Let's go on to number four. Neither he nor his friend was were there. Okay, so here we have a, a question, neither, all right? So the, the boy, he, nor his friend. Okay, so he is one person, nor his friend is one person, okay? So either one of them was not there. We're talking about one person. So we have to use the singular form, which is was. Neither he nor the friend was there. Is that right? Yes, was is the correct word. Now let's go to number five. Either the boy or his sisters have has broken the tray. So we have a broken tray. Now we know this boy or his sisters. One of these guys did it, okay? So there's a group of people that have broken the tray. So we use the plural, okay? Which is they have broken the tray. We don't go with the boy or the sister or the sisters. We go with the group. So they have broken the tray. Is that correct? Yes. The boy or his sisters have broken the tray. Let's go to number six. The orator and the statesman have has been invited. Now in this case, which is different from number two, number two was the leader and patriot. These are definitions of one person. In this case, we have the orator that's a person who does oration, talks to people. And the statesman, a person who does a legislation, he's a, a senator or something in a, in a high place, they have been invited. Two people have been invited. So we use the plural, which is H-A-V-E. Not has, we use have. Let's see if that's right. Exactly, have been invited. And then number seven, a series of lectures has been arranged on the subject. So look at the word A. A is one. Okay, series of lectures. So it's a whole series, but it's one series, okay? A series of lectures. So we use the singular form of has, have. We has been arranged on the subject. So we have uh, the singular uh, answer. Let's see if it's right. Correct. A series of lectures has been arranged on the subject. Let's go ahead. Number eight. Kindness, as well as justice, requires or require this. Is it singular or is it plural? All right. Kindness, okay, is one thing, as well as justice. So we have two things. There's, they're talking about kindness and justice requires this. So to have kindness and justice, we have two. It requires with an S. Let's see if that's right. Requires, correct. There's two. Number nine, a number of accidents was were reported in the newspaper. A number, this is the trick. This is the subject, it's A. A what? A number of accidents, okay? But it's only one. So that's singular. So we use the singular form, which is um, a accident was reported, okay? A number of accidents was reported. Are we correct? Yes, was reported. And then let's go to the last one. The number of dropouts w were or was quite large. Now we look here, it's tricky, okay? The English is a tricky language sometimes, but we have to use the rules to make it sound like we know what we're talking about. The is singular. The number of dropouts, the number was quite large. Okay, we don't have to worry about number of dropouts. That's, uh, we have to use the singular form because we're using the as the subject. The number of dropouts was quite large. Is that correct? Yes, the number of dropouts was quite large. And then we can see in our pictures, kindness in action, okay? The two young children are offering to the soldier who's in their country something beautiful. And the soldier with kindness is taking it from the children and smiling at them. 
And this poor little dog is in a kennel. We don't know what kind of kennel it is. He may have been picked up somewhere. But there's a lady just rubbing his, his chin, offering kindness. It's always in order. And that's the communication we're trying to convey, is kindness and consideration. Then we jump into our final topic for this morning, is tenses. We're going to sound like we know how to communicate, and we're going to communicate in the right tense. What are the tenses? There's past, things have happened in the past, things are happening right now, we're having a beautiful class about English right now, and things will happen in the future. But we want our words to match the tense that we're trying to explain to the people that we're talking to or we're writing about. So in this uh, particular qu uh, section, we have to fill in the blanks with the appropriate form of the verbs given in the brackets. So they give you the verb, we just have to use the appropriate form. Past, present, future. We have to use the right form. So let's look at the first story. One day, a wolf be drinking at the stream. Okay, so we're talking about the past. It's already happened. So one day, the wolf was drinking. He, he was drinking at the stream, okay? He looked over, and there's the word see, a lamb, who was, who be, some kind of uh, action farther down. He looks down the stream, he sees a lamb. He's a hungry wolf. Hmm, looks like lunch, you know? So he, uh, he saw, he, he already saw the lamb, okay? And the, and the lamb, where, where was he? He was further down the stream. So the word is, he saw the lamb who was further down. The wolf made up his mind. Oh, I'm hungry. I need this nice lamb. You can see. He's licking his chops over here, and he sees the lamb over there. He made up his mind. I'm going to gobble up this lamb. But he's, he's, a crafty, uh, he's a crafty wolf. He's thinking, okay, that he would find some excuse for doing so. He doesn't want to just start running because the lamb will start running away, and the lamb could be pretty quick and run into a flock or something. So he wants to come up close to the lamb and make some conversation and then, then eat the lamb. So... He thought, he has this thought in his head, that he would find, will find, he would find some excuse for doing so. He ran, the story is in past tense, okay? He ran up to the lamb and he said, how dare you muddy the water that I, I'm drinking. I was drinking the water and I am drinking this water and you're muddying the water. So the lamb says, Lamb looks at the wolf and knows this wolf is up to something a little bit crazy. And she replied, ready to run. She goes, I don't see how that can be. We have the words do not see. So we can use the hyphenated version, I don't see. Or you could say, I do not see. Either are correct. How that can be. And then he's looking, what do you mean? Since the water of the stream is running. The water is continually running, okay? It was running before when he first saw her. It's running now. It'll run in the future. Is running from you to me, not from me to you. So the uh, wolf was up here, okay? And the water is running this way. But the wolf said, you're muddy in my water that I'm drinking. But the, the mud can't go this way, up the stream. So the lamb is on notice, okay? And she starts running. She's not going to talk to this wolf anymore. Otherwise, the wolf is going to jump on top of her. So let's see if we're correct in our analysis. One day, the wolf was drinking at the stream. He saw a lamb who was farther down. The wolf made up his mind to eat the lamb. But he thought that he would find some excuse for doing so. He ran up to the lamb and said, how dare you muddy the water that I am drinking? I'm drinking it right now. The lamb replied, I do not see, I don't see how that can be, since the water of the stream is running from you to me and not from me to you. And then the lamb runs away. Let's go to the second uh, 
story, the second ten story here. It was a curious trunk. When the lock was pressed, when the lock was pressed, the trunk would fly. So uh, we have a, a trunk, and when you press the trunk, when you press the trunk, uh, the lock on the trunk, the uh, trunk and anything that's in it starts flying. So the merchant's son, who has this magic trunk, okay, he crouched. He crouched down inside, inside the trunk, okay? And he pressed, he pressed the lock. And then the trunk flew up. Where did it fly up? It flew up through the chimney into the clouds. After a while, the lower part cracked. This trunk, uh, it was a nice storage trunk, but he's a heavy boy. And he's flying with his trunk. And all of a sudden, the bottom starts to crack, which frightened the boy. The boy is way up in the air, and he's frightened. So we use the word frightened. It's a past tense. For if it had broken... The trunk did not break, but it was in the process of breaking. If it had broken uh, in two, he would have had a nasty fall. We have three words here, will, have, and have. So if the trunk did break, he would have had a nasty fall. However, it descended, we have the word descend, safely, and he found himself in Turkey. This is a picture of Turkey. He starts off in India, he presses the trunk, and now he's in Turkey, but he's safe, all right? So let's see, did we use the right words? It was a curious trunk. When the lock was pressed, the trunk would fly. The merchant's son crouched, past tense, inside. He pressed the lock and it flew up. The trunk flew through the chimney into the clouds. After a while, the lower part cracked which frightened him. For if it had broken in two, he would have had a nasty fall. However, it descended safely, and he found himself in Turkey. Here he is, happy in a beautiful country near a mosque in Turkey. So these are the four subjects we're covering today. Uh, the next class, we will go into a few more subjects, just to make sure we have the correct building blocks. We'll frame sentences in the questions. We'll do much more at the next session. Thank you for your kind attention. Om Sairam.